Matamora. Good morning, Cougar. Chef Lindsay here today to share the spirit. Call your Papa John the this tonight, Cougars, for fresh ingredients on your favorite pizza crust. Call your Papa and say you are eating for CCE. That's what I mean. Show your school spirit tonight, Cougars. Since tonight is Thursday, March 4th, I see where the word nerd is scheduled. Hey, are you a word nerd? I got the word. I can't be a dog doubter. I'm a cat because I love the cougars. Don't you too? I like my pizza hot. Do you like your pizza cold? In a flash, just like that she did it. That's where the two are pizzas. Don't you think so too? And I'm sure the news has spread about the books, tops, contest winners. That's a fun fact that I don't think are too funny. This leads us to the tasty part of the news. You got it, it's going to be a lunch. With a shake shape and a dab dab of this, and stir it all up. Here's your cougar weather. The worst part of cooking the pizza is waiting for it to be done. This takes a much of patience. Uh, maybe that will help with your tolerance. Uh, you must have patience with others. We all work at different speeds, you know. That's at the recipe that I use with my customers. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, thank you for calling Papa John's. May I take your order for CCE tonight? Uh, go Cougars! Well, it's here, the moment we've all been waiting for. Well, the test we've all been waiting for, FCAT. The big day is arriving, so let's get ready. Step one, the experts say that eating a good meal the night before the test and eating a good breakfast on the day of the test is important. So let's get some good eating tips from our food expert, Mrs. Folds. Mrs. Folds, why is it important to eat a good breakfast before the FCAT? Well, actually, Lindsay, it's important to eat a good breakfast every day, but before FCAT, we really need to get our bodies and our energy going, and food is like gas. It just energizes our bodies and wakes us up, and we're ready for all the challenges of the day. What are you going to be serving in the Cougar Cafe the week of testing? Well, for Tuesday morning, it's going to be a bagel with cream cheese and jelly, banana, and milk. Well, that sounds good. <laughs> well, what's a good energy food? Actually, the bagel is a good energy food because it has your carbohydrates, which turns into sugar. As we all know, sugar gives us lots of energy. Thank you for your time. Step two, arrive at school on time at testing days. You don't want to be late. Step three, make sure you have two number two pencils with erasers on each day of testing. Step four, answer every question, even those that are difficult. Step five, read all the answer choices before deciding on the best answer. Get a good night's sleep the night before each test. A rested brain thinks better. Coach Smith has some tips for us about getting a good night's sleep. Coach Smith, why is sleep important for our body? Sleep is important for your body because sleep affects you physically and mentally. Does lack of sleep affect our thinking? Yes, it does. You have a shorter attention span, you're less motivated, a lack of concentration, and it's harder for you to remember things. About how many hours of sleep should you get each night? You should get between 8 and 10 hours. That way your body has time to rest, heal, and recharge. Thank you. You're welcome. Take a deep breath and relax. Don't panic. You'll do fine. Look up, look up, I'm the cat in the hat. Why do you sit there like that? Wake up, wake up, it's a Tuesday in March. I see you there with your back in the arch. Trying to doze through your CNN news. You'll miss the news if you choose to snooze. This day is special, our friend Dr. Seuss is in the news. Happy birthday to you, dear Dr. Seuss. In honor of him who knows how to rhyme, let's get a skill that you do all the time. To show your good fitness, eat well and know, to be fit is a fiddle, doesn't happen with the riddle. Moving around will decrease your middle. I am the cat in the hat, you know that. But if I weren't fit, you'd say I'm not it. So who knows your nose better than you? Let's pick up the phones and call homophones. Hello, hello, please answer quick. Papa John, Papa John, please take my order. Thursday is spirit night for cheesy pizza and cash. It's a smart thing to do. Papa John's is a smash. 
Who knows some special trivia for our special day? Do you think our little fish here will play? Oh, no, I do not. I remember that day that my weather was out. Very well, dear fish. It is as you wish. We will walk the walk to the trivia talk. Trivia talk. If you have read The Cat in the Hat, you know I have two things. Two things in a box. Could you please tell us now? What doesn't belong? Why doesn't the spider guy belong with those things? He is not a thing one, nor a two, or a four. Let's send him right out, right through the door. Hey, I bet with the net I can get you your lunch, although it is not quite time yet. Munch, munch, lunch. What? No green eggs and ham? So here she comes in. Her name's not Sam. Looking sunny and bright. Hope the weather matches her just right. Good morning, Cougars. I'm Lindsay, your short reporter, and this is the 30-second short report number one. Today we're going to be talking about box tops. You find them on food boxes in the grocery stores. They earn cash for our school. You can bring them in any time, any day. It's very simple. All you need to do is find them on your everyday items like cereal, gogurt, and hot pocket. Cut them out and bring them in. Well, now you know the basic facts on box tops. 29.30, I'm out. My fellow Americans, I, President George Washington, first president of your United States, welcomes you to school on this Monday, February 22nd. And may I say, happy birthday to me. Let's see, why, how old would I be today if I were alive? Hmm, born in the year 1732, I'm sure you can do the math. 278 years old, not bad for an old president, eh? Although, I could use a new fitting for some teeth. They seem a bit large. Dare I say, there are birthdays among you this week. I declare, let the cougar birthdays appear. Name on the birthday list. Did you see yours as well? We wish you the happiest of birthdays. Now, hmm, this next item I'm not familiar with. It's something to do with pepper? You are not salt, you are a pepper, Sir Trevor Lightfoot. Sir Trevor is from Mrs. Thomas's first grade. Classroom, the P.E. instructor found Trevor doing the right thing. It is said that you know how to show participation. Bravo, Sir Trevor, bravo. A good citizen is what you are, Sir Trevor. Continue to show your character. It's very noble. Here, here, a question for you. Question of the week. What do you know about me, President George Washington? That would be me. You still speaking of me in this year of 2010? I am truly honored to have served our country's people. I cannot tell a lie. There, that takes care of the matters of the state. Next, we have matters of the cougars. Hear ye, hear ye. Aiden Broomfield and Savon Davis finished all 44 levels of math facts in a flash. These two young gentlemen are taught by Mrs. Myers in her second grade class. I say Sir Aiden and Sir Savon should join the government in the finance department. Your country can use your fine mathematic geniuses. And there are great readers among us. Hear ye, new members to the AR-50 Point Club are before us. Welcome to the Reading Club, Caroline Owens from Mrs. Myers' class, and to Madison Johnston from Mrs. Forehand's class. Both are in the AR-50 Point Club. It is with much celebration we share your fabulous news. You must have a compassion for reading. Good show, Cougars. Good morning, trick-or-treaters. Are you ready for Saturday night? Let's talk safety. Walk on the sidewalk when you trick-or-treat. If there is no sidewalk, walk facing traffic. Cross only at corners. Never cross between parked cars or in the middle of a block. Take a flashlight so you can see and be seen by others. Wait till you get home to sort, check, and eat your treat. Happy hunting for treats. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Good morning to all you smiling cougars. You are starting your day with me and CNN. I'm Lindsay. What's the date? Thursday, February 18th. This month is flying by. If you're feeling totally confused today, then the word nerd has a word for you. Don't be flummoxed, cougars. You came to the right place to find your answers to your puzzlement. I get flummoxed sometimes when I try to remember things that happened here at CCE when I was a first grader. Do you? Have no fear. That's what yearbooks are for. Can you tell I like the word nerd's word? It's fun to say. Oh my, we're surrounded. Did you see the landscape in the CCE Hallway Museum? Meet one of our cool cougar artists. It's Emily Alexander from the fourth grade. Emily chose to do her picture in pencil. Check out her shading. It looks so realistic, Emily. Those pictures in the hallway look like professional paintings. Truly awesome, cougars. As an artist myself, I would rate this picture with four paintbrushes out of five. Wouldn't you agree, cougars? Okay, time to change hats. With the chick chick here and the chick chick there, balk? Look for me at Chick-fil-A this Friday, Cougars. Hmm, now I'm thinking about lunch. Here's what's cooking, Cougars. We are so lucky to have a lunch program at our school. Let's see if the weather is as good as our lunch. Good morning, Cougars. I'm Lindsay, and I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Fowler. She is the para of the year. A para is like an assistant. If you've been to the library before, you know her. Let's go meet her. Congratulations. Thank you. What is your favorite part of working here at CCE? Working with the boys and girls in the media center and in kindergarten. I just like it all. When did you start working? 1986. What are your hobbies? Reading and working in my yard. What is your favorite book? Mystery. Good mystery stories. What is your favorite author? Mary Higgins Clark. She writes good mystery stories. Cool. Where were you born? In Lakeland, Florida. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's time for her to get back to work. Make sure if you see her to congratulate her. I'm Lindy, signing off from CNN. Hi, good morning Cougars. I just flew in from a big night of baby teeth and boy are my arms tired. <laughs> are you thinking who is this fairy sitting on a pile of teeth and why is she here? I'm happy to say happy National Tooth Fairy Day. Today is Friday, February 26th. It's a special day for everyone, even Mr. Lennon and Mr. Kim. I remember finding their first baby teeth under their pillows. I believe their first tooth was worth one dollar and the rest for 50 cents. Times have changed. Some teeth are worth five dollars or sometimes I get a note under a pillow that asks for a new toothbrush or chocolate which causes cavities and I get teeth faster. Ooh, anyways, what's the big deal about Tooth Fairy Day? Your word nerd has a word for that. You see, my dears, you wouldn't be able to masticate your food with those wiggly jiggly baby teeth. Did you know that people used to think that they had to bury their child's tooth in their backyard so that their child's new teeth would grow? That wasn't a clean job for me. Digging up those baby teeth in the dark was very hard work. Have you lost a tooth this week? Hmm, I seem to have lost a tooth. Could it possibly be in your lost and found box? Did you see that pillow? I'll check under that. Oh, look here, what a neat analogy. Oh, you must brush those teeth. I'll tell you, one little friend of mine had such a cavity. His mouth hurt all the time and he couldn't eat much and he never felt like smiling at all. The dentist had to pull it out and I got that tooth the very same night. He only got a dime for that rotten thing. I've got more baby teeth than that. Keep reading and maybe you can catch up to my number of teeth. Oh no, poor Georgie. He had some really bad teeth. You know George Washington? I am so proud of you. You make my wings flutter. Shall we take a look at your healthy lunch? I hear you are all about compassion, Cougars. I am very compassionate about baby teeth. They are so important. And please make friends 
with your dentist. He will give you any tooth he pulls, and you know where to put it. Sweet dreams, cougars. I'm off. Veterans Day honors men and women that have served in the U.S. Armed Services. We honor our veterans at 11 o'clock of the 11th day of the 11th month. November 11, 1918 is when World War I ended and the treaty was signed at 11 o'clock. Special services are held at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia. On Veterans Day, we remember the men and women, past and present, who fought and who currently serve to preserve our freedom and the freedom of others. On this coming Veterans Day, we will recognize the 25 million living veterans. Americans have stepped forward to defend our freedom generation to generation. From Valley Forge to Vietnam, from Kuwait to Kandahar, from Berlin to Baghdad, make sure you take a moment of silence today at 11 o'clock in honor of our veterans. I'm Lindsay signing off from CNN.